I've finished it then at last. So what do you think of it? Well, I'm not normally all that keen on gardening books. <laughs> but I can't see what the fuss was about. It's years since I read it. A few pairs of corduroy trousers flying about and a bit of humping going on. <laughs> That's life, isn't it? What, humping? It's a major part for most people. 20 minutes a week, if you're lucky. Yes, that's 20 minutes a week doing it, but it's seven days a week tracking it down. It is not big game hunting, you know, Jeff. Well, I can't see why people think a bit of harmless humping is obscene. They must be perverts or something. Well, there's books and there's books. Yes, but I'm a grown man, Jean. I don't want some bigoted twit in the Houses of Parliament with half an education telling me what I can and cannot read. Bigoted? in Parliament, I see. Present bigots accepted, of course. It's not just adults, though, Mr. Jeff. I mean, what about children? What about the impressionable and feeble-minded who can't make decisions for themselves? Well, what happens in the Liberal Democrats is their business. <laughs> <laughs> but look, if you're going to judge a book by its effects, why doesn't somebody ban the Bible? I mean, it's religion and politics that cause most of the misery. You're preaching to the converted, Jeff. Who got the satanic verses into the local library when the council refused to stock it? And who got little black Sambo thrown out on the grounds that it was racist? It was racist. I'm not saying it wasn't. You're saying that was still censorship? I'm not saying anything. You tell me what pornography is. Pornography, Jean, is what you don't think someone else should read because it might corrupt them. Although it couldn't possibly corrupt you. Because if it did, the League of Decency will become the League of Filth by now, which they're not. So they must be wrong. <laughs> you said you finished that. I'm just checking on a few minor details. <laughs> so that's the Times, the Financial Times, Money Monthly, Money Magazine, You and Your Money, and... Uh... The usual. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, the usual. Mr. Eagle, the Gentleman's Magazine. Ah. <clears throat> Here we are. Thank you. Good morning, Doctor. Oh, morning, Jean. Come in for our Marxism today, have we? Am I used to abandoning on jam tomorrow? Hello, oh, Jean. I can. Smash hits, please, and true romance. Okay. So much for the national curriculum. <laughs> uh, Glasgow Herald, please. That and ten of the week's cigars. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, have you got Ecology magazine? Uh, just on the shelf behind you, madam. Look at that. You see the back of her teeth? Yes, and they look like they're all her own. <laughs> I mean, um, <clears throat> terrible. <laughs> um, the Independent, Ecology, and those, please. <laughs> please, ma'am. All of them. I mean, I don't think they're, um, 15 quids worth there, madam. Fine, and I'd like a receipt. You wouldn't rather have hello? <laughs> hello? I'll take those. I'll put them in a bag for you. Oh, that won't be necessary. If it's fit material to go on the shelves, I don't think I need to hide them in a bag. No, madam. Though I don't know if you realise, but at the moment they're up in the DIY section. <laughs> <laughs> So, does this degrade women, or what? Not only does it degrade women, Jean, it brings nurses' uniforms into disrepute. And nuns' outfits. <laughs> nuns' outfits? I said fold down the corners of the offensive pages, not let's have an outbreak of all boys together. <laughs> we're folding, we're folding. You might do it quicker if you weren't drooling so much. To the pure, all things are pure, Jean. Yes, pity they weren't available. I think you may as well fold down the whole magazine. Ah, mind you, you can take all this far too seriously. I don't think you can take it seriously enough. Now, I'm no prude. As we prudes say. I am not a prude. No more am I a sexist. But most men would look at this and think it was just a bit of a giggle. I mean, I saw worse than this in the school playground when I was 14. Yes, they do say the Scots have a superior educational system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I take it you two will now be breaking into rugby songs and mooning out of the window. <laughs> Jean, I'm not saying I'm in favour of this, but these girls don't have to do this. They can get another job. How do you know they had a choice? You see, Samantha Fox, I feel sorry for. All that money for getting cold bosoms. It must be dreadful being rich and famous. I'd hate that. Eh, hey, Mark? Rich and famous? No, couldn't stand 15 minutes of it. 
An awful lot of women find this very offensive, you know, Ken. No? Yeah. Why do so many of them do it then, Jean? You know, I sometimes wonder just who's being exploited here, them or the blokes who buy this stuff. Oh, I see. So magazines depicting men prancing around in doctor's outfits and monk's uniforms. <laughs> monk's uniform. <laughs> that wouldn't be demeaning to men. Uh, look, Jean, there's a divot in my constituency who calls himself Jock Strap and lifts his kilt at hen parties. <laughs> but him prancing around in a spangled spot, and that doesn't make me look stupid. I can do that for myself. <laughs> I think they should be on display at a newsagent's two shelves above the children's comics. No, you're absolutely right. I don't care what people read, Kim, but I do object to where some things are sold. It's like drink. It's on sale at pubs and off licenses, not down at the early learning centre. And I thought you were supposed to be folding. Oh, I'm folding, I'm folding. And Mark's folding too. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm folding really carefully. <laughs> Tell me, which women MPs have tried to get a bill through on this before? Which women MPs haven't? Jean, riding off on one of your little crusades again, I see. You do a fair bit of mileage on that soapbox of yours, don't you? Do you know, whenever I see a donkey with its hind leg talked off, I always think of you. <laughs> and whenever I see a mouth with a foot in it, you invariably spring to it. <laughs> but I'm sure they also serve who only stand and sneer. Oh, on the contrary, Jean, if you have a look at your early day motion, you will see that I put my weight fully behind your campaign. You have? Oh, yes. In my opinion, it's uh, one of those few issues that bridge the parliamentary divide. I mean, this is not a party political matter. This is a free vote issue, like the right to life and hanging. Both of which you support, I suppose. Oh, hanging and the right to life. Oh, yes, I'm in favour for both. <laughs> but uh, as we're obviously so united, shouldn't we talk about it further? So you're going to support my bill? Like a truss to the hilt. Well... <laughs> If our stairs were nearby, Godfrey, I'd go to the foot of them. Adversity, Jean, and politics. Brings a man strange bedfellows. No, just to the foot, not the top of the stairs, Godfrey. <laughs> oh, touche. <laughs> Absolutely right here, Jean. On the one hand, you have interfering do good, uh, say the nanny state is right, while the really offensive literature is on a shelf within the easy grasp of any decently grown nature. I completely agree, Godfrey. I'm so glad we see eye to eye on this. It's becoming ludicrous. Do you know, only the other day I took my grandson to the local library, and do you know, little black Sambo has been banned from the children's section. <laughs> yes. While Ronald lives at Donald, and Mummy's got a new friend, they're freely available with the most explicit illustrations. And shouldn't they be? Aren't there any gay Tories, Godfrey? Well, there probably are, but I don't think we're very happy about it. Well, you? <laughs> they're not prepared to stand up and be counted. Well, I should hope not. I want them sitting down and shutting up about it. <laughs> this is a censorship issue. I mean, little black Sambo. What's wrong with him? Plenty. Where do you want to start? I used to love the little chap. Do you remember the story where they tried to scrub him white and it wouldn't come off? <laughs> Ever so jolly. <laughs> Don't you think if you were black you might find that rather offensive, Godfrey? Well, I certainly found Mummy's got a new friend and she brought her suitcase the wrong side of tacky. <laughs> but I'm agreeing with you, Jean. Hey, what a poor do if a child can't buy his beano without Ronald and Donald breathing down his neck. And it's a poor do if a woman can't buy her cosmopolitan without Merv the perv sticking his hand up her skirt. <laughs> well, we obviously disagree about some of the details. But fundamentally, I think we're in accord, don't you? So you're going to support my bill, and if I get a debate, you'll be on my side. Well, in principle, yes. Well, I thought I'd made that clear. Why do you ask? No, no, if you're happy, that's fine. It's just, if you're willing to support it, Godfrey... Yes? I just get the feeling there must be something wrong with it. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. There you are, Jean. You can have these notes as well. Ah, uh, thanks. So, what happened to your bill? You got kicked out. Yes. You probably won't get anywhere either. Page three have got too many regular readers in this place just now. But it all goes to create a climate of opinion. 
We'll get it through eventually. What, when all the decent thinking men agree? Something like that. And I'd be ready for them too, if I were you. From which direction? I mean, with the smart remarks. Within five minutes of my getting up, the debate on my page three bill had turned into a discussion on the size and merits of my boobs. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll be all right. I've got bumper stickers for mine. But, um, <laughs> thanks for the warning. Yeah, the whips have got them to clean their act up, but it's still pretty blue. And I'll tell you some of the ones you want to watch. Well, you get them on both sides. Some really nasty... What's going on here, then? A little petticoat conspiracy in the ranks? We're just having a private conversation, Norman. Oh. Well, you know where to find me if you need me. Well, the thing is, Norman, do we? No, no, true enough. But you'll find me there anyway. Hmm? Oh, Norman, yes, we do need you. We're getting up this petition. Would you like to sign? Sign something? Oh, yes, of course. There's uh, no hyphen in Flintstone, is there? <laughs> but there's over a hundred signatures there, Mr. Stevens. Yes, I can see that. I don't like the magazines any more than you do, Mrs. Price, but I'm the same as everyone. I've got a living to make. Oh, we appreciate that, but it's only a small part of what you sell, surely? Yes, but the margins on most of what I sell are small. The margins on that make up for it. Well, can't you make up for it in some other way? We don't want to damage your business. Oh, maybe, but that's what it amounts to. It's like I said, it's not that I don't agree with you. But you're asking me to take a drop in my income for your principles. So what drop in your income are you taking? Fair enough. Now, whatever you lose through not selling those magazines will match it, and you name the charity. But I'm not running a charity, Mrs. Price. I'm feeding a family. I just don't lose the sale. I lose the customer. They don't only come in for magazines. No, the people who've signed this are your customers, too. After all, we use this shop every day. And maybe seeing these magazines on your shelves makes us feel uncomfortable. Well, I don't see why you pick on me. I've got one shop. I'm not W.H. Smith, so why not go and see them? <laughs> well, we are. We haven't singled you out. Oh, only they can afford to tell you to get lost. No. <laughs> I'm finish these returns. At least have a think about it. Dad, you too. Yeah, OK. Just leave it there, Nicky. Thanks. OK. So. Hi. Hello. Hi. All right. When that lot's sold. OK? Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome, ladies. And you won't forget where your votes come from, will you? Money Monthly, Money Magazine, Make Your Money Grow, Make Your Money, Dividend, and Status. And my usual. Oh. Sorry, Mr. Egan, we haven't got it in this month. Oh? Uh, no, we've stopped carrying it. Uh, some of the customers objected to that kind of thing. That kind of thing? My usual? But you can't object to my usual. It's a perfectly harmless concoction. Well, there's the petition. You can see for yourself. Find it offensive? What about these? Smash hits, please. I'll just see to this young lady. The Marxism today, gay times and spare elbow or whatever it is. Why are they still on the shelves, hmm? They weren't objected to, sir. Smash hits, please. I see. So any rampant Trotskyite or Ronald and Donald can have their interests catered for, but a red-blooded Englishman who's committed the unpardonable sin of being born normal can't get his usual. <laughs> I'm simply responding to customer demand, sir. That's business, as you know. Um, Smash hits, please, and a packet of sugar-free chewing gum. This is not the end of this. I'll be back. Smash hits, please. Ah, Jean, an urgent word with you, if I may. Please, what is it, Godfrey? I thought we were eye to eye and cheek to cheek on this censorship issue. I thought so, yes. Yeah, so did I. Are we against censorship and for free speech, or aren't we? I thought so, yes. And so did I. And I just come from hot foot from my news agents where I was unable to obtain a copy of my usual. Uh, not knowing what your usual is, Godfrey. I'm referring to the latest instalment of the Playboy magazine. Oh, Playboy. There's no respect to Robert Jean. Playboy's not a, a girly magazine. Isn't it? Oh, it's a highbrow gentleman's periodical with a long-standing tradition of in-depth journalism and serious features. <laughs> and centrefolds with big boobs. And literature from some of the finest American authors of the century, like 
Tom Wolfe go vidal. Miss January, Miss February, Miss September. Always a favourite when the leaves come off. Well, perhaps there is a passing reference to the curvature of the female form, but no more than that, and in the very best possible taste. Oh, so as long as women are exploited in the best possible taste, that's all right then. Botticelli painted a few nudes, you know, Jean. Not for Playboy, he didn't. <laughs> well, if you're going to abolish Playboy, you might just as well close down the National Gallery and put a pair of underpants on Nelson's column. <laughs> These are delicate issues, Godfrey. It's a question of balancing one freedom with another and considering the greater good. Absolutely. And on balance... Yes? We've had too much of the usual. <laughs> anyway, under my bill, you'll be able to buy it elsewhere. But I don't want to buy my usual from a shop with boarded up windows, rubbing shoulders with elderly gentlemen with stains on their raincoats. Talking to journalists is all part of politics, Godfrey. <laughs> if you were a woman, you might have other opinions. But I am not a woman. I am a conservative. <laughs> and what stops the gander getting his sauce stops the goose getting her gooseberries. Ah, oh, Freddy. Hello, Godfrey. A petition here I'd like you to sign. Uh, what's all this about, then? Uh, you know, the usual. <laughs> oh, the usual. Yes. He stopped selling it round the corner now, you know. Oh. I bought this instead. The eagle? <laughs> I couldn't resist seeing what Dan Dare was up to. Uh, just here, is it? You're getting plenty of support, then. Yeah, I'm just a bit dubious as to where some of it's coming from. Dear Sister Price, that's me, we write to offer our support in your campaign against those devil's henchmen, the merchants of pornography. <laughs> Nothing unbalanced so far. Keep up the good work. Yours sincerely, the Daughters of the Bloody Tabernacle. <laughs> P.S. We are praying for you. <laughs> you don't want them praying for you, then? I don't even want them writing to me. <laughs> you know, since I got involved in this, I have had every loony, killjoy and professional whinger in the country lending me their support. Uh, what about friends, Romans and countrymen? What happened to them? That's what they don't <laughs> seem to understand, Ken. I'm anti-pornography. I am not anti-sex. I am all in favour of sex. Plenty of it. Let's all have a bit of sex. Why not? Well, just wait there, then. I'll get the desks moved. Mr. Sharp arrived. I've got all the correspondence. All oh, right. Yes, um, I'll come over. Uh, what was it he wanted again? Impressed by your campaign. Like to meet up with you. Mutual advantage. Blah, blah. All right. Um, I'll see you later, Ken. I'm just going blah, blahs. OK. Blah, blah for now. And on behalf of your many Muslim constituents, who hold women in great respect, I might add, yes. the Muslim Shopkeepers Association wishes to express its support for your campaign. And we have agreed to no longer handle such offensive materials. Oh, thank you, Mr. Shah. Uh, perhaps I could come and talk to the association at some point. Uh, yes, indeed, Mrs. Price. Uh, for we were particularly impressed by the speech which you gave, in which you tried to define obscenity. Uh, when you said, if you remember... Yes, I think what I said... What you said was, obscenity is that which diminishes the sense of personal worth and integrity by which human beings define themselves. I know what I said. Aptly put, Mrs. Price. And so with this in view, I now present this petition on behalf of the Muslim shopkeepers requesting that the works of Salman Rushdie be included in your Bill of Offensive Materials <laughs> and withdrawn from the public library. Ah, oh, um, this puts me in rather a difficult position, Mr. Shah. Uh, do you know who was responsible for having the satanic verses placed in the local library? Yes, Mrs. Price. You were. Yes, well, if you'll excuse me, then. Oh, no, stay there, Mark. I might need you to refresh my memory. <laughs> I still don't think the satanic verses should be banned, Norman, do you? Well, I'm starting to think they could possibly be sure. <laughs> well, I mean, it's nothing to have fat what about, is it? I mean, I'm sympathetic, obviously. Well, obviously. With several thousand Muslim voters in the constituency, I'd be sympathetic, too. I'm not in it for the votes, Norman. Well, you're not in it for the abstentions. Uh, no, what I mean is, I am sympathetic to anyone who feels their beliefs have been insulted, even when their beliefs I don't myself hold. And that includes fascists, Satanists, paedophiles and double-glazing salesmen, does it? Well, apart from them. Uh, that's what I thought. Everyone's tolerant until they find something they can't stand. In which gent's convenience did you qualify as a Bogram lawyer, Norman? I'm trying to give you both sides of the case. That is what the whip is for, to make a simple issue complicated. I 
I should just have to tell the Muslim shopkeepers that a degree of tolerance is the price of free speech, and free speech does not come cheap. And so who's going to pay for it? In this instance, they are. Uh, salam alaikum. What does that mean? Quite a lot in a marginal constituency. <laughs> oh, and the telegraph. And uh, um, my brother asked me if I could get him a copy of the uh, Gay Times. Sorry, sir? Uh, gay Times, is it? I think that's what he said it was called. I'm sorry, sir. We don't stock that now. Oh, uh, well, never mind. Uh, he can get it elsewhere. Uh, he only takes it for the recipes, anyway. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Mr. Stevens. I can't seem to find spare rib and Marxism today. Are they in? No, Mrs. Price. We don't have them anymore. What? Why not? I think Mr. Egan's petition should explain. Stop him going there, Jean. It's too convenient. He won't see the colour of my money till he puts my magazines back on the shelves. I am boycotting the place. Girl cotting, surely? That's all very well, Freddy. But he's not going to see much of my custom until he gets my usual back on the counter. Uh, under the counter, Godfrey. <laughs> I suppose he just couldn't keep going, Jean. No, that was probably it. Pity, though. Prime sight, too. Yes, it wasn't a good position. I wonder how it could have gone wrong with 600-odd MPs traipsing by the newspapers and the magazines they buy. Yes, they must be killing a tree a week each. <laughs> I suppose those double yellow lines made a difference. Yeah, that was probably it. Lack of adequate parking has ruined many a small shopkeeper. Well, there you are, you see, Jean. Labour-controlled council. Tory, actually. Inheritance uh, of a Labour legacy. Over ten years ago. Takes a long time to put a real mess right, you really. <laughs> Do you know what's become of him? He's gone to Watford to open a grocer's, I believe. Oh, much better for him. Out in the country, away from the hurly burly. <laughs> you can't go wrong with a grocer's. Unless, of course, the local branch of the women in dungarees complain that his... Uh, Rhubarb is unduly suggestive. <laughs> oh, the local conservative club denounces chickens for being too left-wing. Yes. Yes, old card, Jean. Oh, thank you. Would you like to contribute to a small gift? Oh, right. Uh, what have people been giving? Uh, is it tenner or what? Oh, that's more than generous. Oh, well, here's a fiver, then. <laughs> Not that I feel in any way responsible about this. I've got no bad conscience at all. I hope you're not implying that I've got anything to feel guilty about. Well, it wasn't me who closed the shop. I didn't drive him out of business, Godfrey. I was merely fighting for what I believe in, and I will continue to do so. Uh, so will I. We are politicians, after all, Jean. Concerned with what is right and what is wrong. Yeah. We are here to safeguard the interests of the nation. And unfortunately, often, people come second place. New magazine, Godfrey. Huh? Oh, no. The usual. 